Who are you soliciting? Well, I'm soliciting the Lord. Well, that's great. In other words, no entity on the other side could masquerade as the Lord or masquerade as an angel, right? Where do you get that? You once mentioned here that one could train to learn how to become a prophet in the Old Testament. How is this different from the bad kind of divination? Well, I don't think we can learn or be trained to do something that is, it is an act of the Holy Spirit to do. What I'm talking about in terms of training is, is the school of the prophets that's mentioned in the Old Testament, where you know people would sit at the feet of a prophet and would travel with him, I think ostensibly record what was said, learn again how to how to preach, maybe learn how to how to do public speaking, learn how to preach to people. They would certainly learn more of the covenant, they would learn more of Torah, uh, you know, from the prophets, so on and so forth. So so that that stuff you can learn and be trained for. But if if the Spirit of God has to be empowering the prophet, that's up to the Spirit of God. You don't you don't learn you know, some buzzword or some incantation that makes the spirit of God fall upon you. And now you can prophesy. So I think, I think we need to be a little, a little more careful when talking about prophecy. It depends what, what you mean. How is it different from the bad kind of divination? Well, it would be wrong. Uh, you know, the bad kind of divination is, is seeking, seeking knowledge from quote, the other side seeking knowledge from the spiritual world. And you know, those who, who today would, would claim to be you know, learning to be prophets or being trained to be prophets, they're, they're being trained to seek God. Okay? As, as much as I disagree with the idea again, because the, the spirit of God is gonna do what he wants to do. The spirit of God isn't waiting for you to take a class or a degree to use you as a prophet if that's what he wants to do. He's just going to give you revelation. That's the way it happened in the New Testament. That's the way I would expect it would happen at any point. Um, but the you know the, the people today who are who are taught again, I'm thinking of like the the Nar situation, the Bethel school of ministry, that kind of thing. They're not they're not taught to seek revelation from from just anybody on the other side. They're they're, they're being taught to seek the Lord or to seek God. You know, seek God's revelation, or maybe even an angel. I mean, that which is, is dangerous. We don't have any precedent for that in the, in the Bible. Go, go and solicit an angel for information. Um, but, but they certainly aren't thinking that we want to tap into the other side, no matter what's over there, and get information. Okay, that that would be your 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 classic condemned divination that, that you're you're consulting the dead, or you're consulting evil spirits again, that are part of the spiritual world. I do think that the, that the Bethel crowd does transgress here a little bit with, I'm trying to remember the term they use, but basically laying on people's graves, you know, to soak something up. Um, I mean, the, the, to me, that gets very close to necromancy uh, and, and just outlawed forms of divination. Um, grave what is it to term they use grave something grave sucking oh yeah That's such an yeah. elegant term uh, there uh, is actually a tradition <laughs> in in rabbinic judaism when some people go to the graves of rabbis and do something similar i think you're 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 getting pretty close to necromancy there and, and that should definitely be avoided because you don't know who you are talking to right who are you soliciting mm -hmm. well i'm soliciting the lord well that's great so, so in other in other words no entity on the other side could masquerade as, as the Lord or masquerade as an angel, right? Where do you get that? You know, again, where, where are the examples of the new, in the new Testament of the gifts being taught or dealt with in this way? They're not, the, the, the gifts were transmitted through the apostolic laying on of hands. It's, it's not that complicated. Um, it, it came directly through, you know, the, those who would, you know, would have been apostles in the New Testament. I realize there's four or five different kinds of apostles in the New Testament. Uh, so, so without getting into all that, but but that's how the gifts were were transmitted. You know, it, it, you know, Paul would would go to a place, he'd 
win people to the Lord. They'd start a church. They'd try to find leadership, Lord willing, or they'd leave leave people behind. You know, some of his traveling companions until the that local group had enough leadership, and then they would the the apostles, you know, would, would or, and the elders would lay hands on on an individual, both validating their ministry and also, you know, Paul says on a couple of occasions. Like when he when he, with the Romans, he wants to visit them, but he he desires to impart to them some spiritual gift through the laying on of hands. You know, th- there are passages like that, but that's Paul. You know, that's a that's a special kind of you know upper level uh, apostle that, that we don't we don't have today, regardless of what anybody's claiming. Um, you know, we're 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 not operating at the level of the apostle Paul, and certainly the twelve of which Paul was not a part. Um, that sort of thing.